Hi there. I thought we might pass the time by playing a little game. I know a game. The only thing is, I always win. And I know that sounds kind of strange and presumptuous, but I assure you, I always win. Uh, and it's not that it's not that I can't lose. It's that I don't lose. So, um, with that in mind, I'll tell you what. If you play a few rounds with me, then I'll show you some of my tricks under the hood uh, and uh, teach you how to play this. Uh, at least enough that you could practice on your own and maybe uh, be dazzle and annoy your friends uh, with it. It's actually a very old game called Nim. It goes back to the ancient Chinese thousands of years. And it can be played with cards or it can be played with sticks or stones or what have you because the objects are not what's important, it's the pattern. Uh, and uh, that's the essence of the game. Two players play and the cards or stones or objects are arranged like this. Seven. Five. Three. One. Now, on your turn, the player can take as many cards as they like, but only from one row at a time. And whoever picks up the last card is the loser. Would you like to start? Well, I'm sure you would, but the problem is that this is a video and not interactive, and you can't reach through the screen and just go ahead and grab a card. So I'll have to uh, arrange for a stand-in. Now, fortunately, I have a guide for this sort of thing. Uh, and actually, that's the first place that I encountered this game uh, is in a film called Last Year at Marion Bad. Uh, it's a French art film from the 1960s by Alain Regnier. And it's beautiful and mysterious and maddening. And uh, you just, it's one of those films you just kind of dive into and go chasing after shadows, which is what a lot of this game is about. There's a character in the film who plays this game three times. Uh, and watching the movie over the course of watching the characters play the game three times, I kind of went, hmm, I can do that. Now, at this point, I've offered you the opportunity to go ahead and play which you will probably take, uh, because at this point you are basically putty in my hands if I've done my job properly, which is that I've been manipulating you subtly all through this whole presentation from the very beginning. I've been reaching in and kind of playing with your cerebral cortex and gently massaging you to put you at a disadvantage so that I can win. It all starts with me saying to you in the first place that I have this game that I always win. Well, what's the natural reaction to that? Oh, yeah, really, fella? Well, let's just see about that. And then I lay out the cards, and I do it in a strange fashion. We start with seven, and then five. Where are we going with this? And then the pattern emerges. But I've gotten you, you know, off kilter again. And then I explain the rules. On your turn, you can take as many cards as you want. Oh, boy but only from one row at a time. And whoever picks up the last card, and I've barely let you have a chance to even think about that last thing before I'm already hitting you with the next thing. Whoever picks up the last card and you're expecting me to say is the winner, is the loser. What? Would you like to go first? Oh, I can pick up as many cards as I want. I don't want to be the one picking up the last card. Sure. Which is what I love because the more cards you pick up, the easier it is for me to kill you in the game. Uh, so, so here's how it works in the movie. First round. Voulez-vous commencer?
So there are two players, the dealer and the uh, victim, <laughs> the protagonist of the movie. And we're going to call these rows, row one, row three, row five, and row seven, all right, for reference purposes. Because uh, certain patterns will start to emerge, but it's important to keep, keep clear on which row we're talking about. One, three, five, and seven. So, he says, would you like to go first? And the player takes one card off of row seven. The dealer takes one card off of row five. Now, at this point, the player has had all he can stand. And he says, well, I'm just going to take all of row seven. And the dealer looks at this and takes two cards off of row five. Now, here's our first important pattern and the important point in how you win this game. It's all about what you as the dealer leave the player with. You want to get to certain scenarios, and if you get to a certain state, there's no way out for them. Most players lose on their first turn. Um, uh, if not their first turn, then their second turn. Certainly if they do something rash, like take an entire row, it makes it much easier to get to one of these scenarios of which this is the first. The scenario is one, two, and three. There's three rows. One row has one card. The second row has two cards. The third row has three cards. If you leave the player with this pattern, there's no way out because inevitably, no matter what they do, you can reduce them to another pattern from which there's even less and less of a way out until finally they lose and you squish them like a nail bug. So at this point, the player takes one off of row five and the dealer takes two off of row three leaving us with one, one, and one. Three rows with one card each. There's no way out for the, for the player with this pattern because if they take one card <laughs> and you take the other card, no matter what, they're gonna be left with one card. They're done. That's the end of round one. All right, now let's talk about round two in the film. In the movie, it's played with sticks No, c'est impossible. As the scene begins, we see that the player has already taken the one card off of row one, and the dealer is in the middle of taking a card off of row three. Now, I actually have to get out my notes for this because this hand is a little involved, and it's easy to get lost. But I'll comment on important patterns as they emerge. Okay, the next thing the player does is they take one off of row seven, and the dealer takes one off of row five. two, four, and six. If you leave the player with two, four, and six, they're doomed. Player takes one off of row five. Dealer takes another one off of row seven. Now the player takes one off of row three. And here's the killer move. The dealer takes three off of row seven, leaving the player with one, two, and three again. Player takes one off of row five, and the dealer takes one off of row three, leaving us with yet another pattern, two and two. You'll see this sort of mirrored in the next hand as well, but if you leave the player with two and two, they're doomed, because if they have one off of row five, the dealer's going to take two off of row seven here. If they take two, you take the one that's left. If they take one, you take two. They're done. There's no other way. That is round two. So then the protagonist sits down and plays one more hand. And again, I need to refer to my notes because this one is a little involved, but a bunch of patterns show up on this too.
Et si c'était à vous de jouer le premier Et une fois de plus, je m'avançais, seul, le long de ces mêmes couloirs, à travers ces mêmes salles désertes. Je longeais ces mêmes colonnades, ces mêmes galeries sans fenêtres. Je franchissais ces mêmes portails, choisissant mon chemin comme au hasard parmi les dédales des itinéraires semblables. Now, the first thing is uh, the uh, player is thinking like everybody else in the audience at this point and says, what if you go first to the dealer? And the dealer just says, fine, go ahead. Does it, it takes one card off of row one, doing away with row one. The player takes one card off row three. Dealer takes one card off row five. The player takes another card off of row three. And the dealer takes two cards off of row seven. The player takes one off of row three. And the dealer takes one off of row seven leaving the player with four and four. If you leave the player with two rows of an equal number, they're doomed. Notice I didn't say even, equal. Okay. The player takes one off row seven. The dealer takes one off row five. The player takes one off row seven. The dealer takes one off row five. Had the player taken one off row five, the dealer would have taken one off row seven. When we were back at four cards each, had the other player taken two cards off of this row, the dealer would have taken two cards off of this row. The whole point is that when you get to an equal number of cards, could be a maximum of five and five. If you leave the player with this, all you have to do is just match whatever their moves are. Whatever they do, you match it on the opposite row. And eventually, you'll get down to this. So there you have it. That's Nim from the film last year at Marion Bad, which has just had a release on Blu-ray that is magnificent and includes an equally magnificent commentary track by my friend and colleague Tim Lucas, the longtime writer and publisher of Video Watchdog, uh, one of the finest minds uh, in uh, cinema critique alive today, uh, and it has the incredible, uncanny, uh, amazing, fortuitous good taste to mention me somewhere in the commentary track uh, in regard to this game, and for that I thank him. Um, so anyway, it's a lot of fun and uh, can really infuriate your friends, and not only is it an avant-garde masterpiece, but it also gives you the capacity to settle several bar tabs and uh, other points of contention. Ever since seeing the movie, I always carry a deck of cards with me now in case I ever need to settle any bets with the devil. Anyway, over and out.